welcome to the Pro Spec List. I am your host, Nico, with uh, the best minds in the modern comic game. We've got uh, our commander in chief, the one and only Dino P. That's right. What's up, boys? Steve from My Bargain Comics. Dalla Ben, Rich Taylor. Mr. Long Short. And the one and only Indie Spotlight Series, Andy. Gentlemen, uh, it's really great to have you guys here. Uh, for those that are listening or watching for the first time, uh, I want to give them a brief synopsis of how we generate this list. Uh, I have uh, these fine folks and uh, you know about a dozen others contribute books to uh, a Excel spreadsheet that uh, we then individually rank and score uh, to try to uh, you know create a hive uh, minded approach to comics that have either explosive growth potential or uh, you know a multi-time multiplier uh, in their future for any number of reasons this uh, allows for different collectors, different flippers, different speculators, investors to provide, uh, their insights and, and their own sort of uh, strategies for buying and selling comics um, without having a single-minded approach of one particular contributor. Uh, these are our 10 picks. Okay. Number 10. Number 10. Look at that. That's Dino. Yeah, well, chain scheme. That's what I do. We're out here. We ain't messing around anymore. Yeah. Uh, let's see if it... There we go. Uh, number 10. There we go. War Realms, New Agent of Atlas, number two. Yeah, first appearance of Swordmaster. Whose pick was this? So this is my pick. Um, I've been trying to get this book on the list for a few weeks, so you guys are aware. Um, as you know, um, I'm big on uh, Swordmaster um, and Arrow, Wave, the rest of the New Agents of Atlas. Not only due to the Asian market, but, uh, you know, also the fact that, you know, Silk is he is in the new Agents of Atlas. She's heavily rumored to be the Spider-Woman or in the Spider-Woman movie. And on top of that, um, you know, you have uh, a book that's coming out in King of Black called King of Black, Black Knight, in which we see Arrow and Swordmaster together for the first time since that Marvel press release back in July when Marvel said they were excited to watch Arrow and Swordmaster to make their place in the greater Marvel universe. Big things to come. 20,000, maybe 21,000 ordered by retailers, uh, Max. Um, you got uh, you got a great cover, and uh, I think this is a this is a, a good book. Long yeah, time. I, I like this one, Rich. Um, people are confused by Swordmaster because he does make an, a cover appearance on a couple of the of the issue number ones, but does not show up inside until this issue issue number two. And uh, and Marvel has um, committed pretty heavily to these characters, so. Uh, I think this is a good pick longer term. This is completely under the radar. Definitely worth picking up right now at these prices. Good one. I honestly, I honestly like the Ron Lim variant, obviously, the one in 25. But that thing is so hard to find. I mean, it's ridiculously hard to find. So if you do find that book, and, you know, in my opinion, if it's under $100, I would snap it up fast. Yeah, one uh, other thing to think about, the New Agents of Atlas, number one, uh, had a uh, double uh, order from uh, Diamond, right? You got one copy Correct. for every uh, copy you ordered, uh, making this particular book substantially uh, more scarce. Well, Basically, that's why the 1 in 25s in this one are, are ghosts, because the print run on this thing was... Uh, what, what was a fraction right under, of, uh, on the yeah. first one, so that's yeah. why you can't track those things down. Cool, good stuff, guys. Right, number nine, you. number nine, number nine is Avengers 112. Right, so th this is my pick, and uh, you know, I mainly play in the modern game, but uh, just thinking about the Guardians of the Galaxy. It seems so far in the rear view since Guardian of the Galaxy 2 uh, came out. And it's going to be a while before the third movie comes out, right? J uh, James Gunn is still, I think, 
they uh, just started on the Peacekeeper uh, series. Um, so it, I, it, it's so it's it's going to be a while, but you know, part of the part of the game we play, right, is is thinking a couple chess moves ahead. And um, and Mantis, this is Mantis's first appearance, right? And you know, thinking about the members of Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, she's um, a likable, you know, character. You know, she she was played for humor. Um, but recently I was reading the Silver Surfer 1990s run. And in the beginning of that run, um, they're kind of a team. It's like kind of Mantis and Silver Surfer. And there's some, uh, I think, romantic interest there, at least from, from the surfer. Um, and it plays into um, the elders of the universe are trying to uh, get the infinity gems. Um, so maybe, you know, eventually there's a Silver Surfer play with Mantis. And there's a couple other plays. I know, you know, the Celestial Madonna storyline with the Avengers is a notable storyline. Um, so, uh, and, and for 30 bucks, you know, you can pick up a, a, a decent um, raw of this, of this book. And I looked at the CGC census most of the, the average grade is about 8.0 to 8.5, and the 8.5 hovers just above $100. So it's still uh, really cheap. Um, and I can, you know, see, you know, for, you know, years to come, you know, I'm sure when cons come back, uh, they'll, 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 the, the Mantis cosplay as Guardians of the Galaxy 3 approaches and comes and goes, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see more of that as well. So, uh, that, that was my pick. Smart book, Steve. I uh, mentioned before the podcast that uh, Guardian seems so far out that I don't have that sense of urgency exactly. uh, that I do with a, a lot of properties. And I think that makes it prime real estate to find some serious deals. Um, also kind of interested in the Silver Surfer being a Ken doll mantis romance. But we can talk about that more after the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight is something is killing the children. What is this? Eleven? Number eight. Very ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is a big boy book. Um the, the, this is Mighty Mel V's pick. He's not here tonight, but um, you know, Mel's thinking on this book is is when this when this thing hits uh hit TV, it's gonna go from three hundred to fifteen hundred. And uh, it's hard to argue that this cover isn't stunning. Um, if you can find it, grab it. The problem is you can't find it, right? We've all looked for it. It, it, it isn't out there. Um, but, um, you know, something, something that's coming with children, all of the, uh, the rare books, whether it's the late printings, uh, the ratio variants, they're evaporating from the market and, uh, they're only going to head higher once this book gets, hits the, uh, hits the mainstream. We're not there yet, um, but we're coming. I know. I know. Andy yeah. loved the series as much as anybody. Andy, tell us about uh, what you see in this cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love the cover. First off, I love the play by Mill. I mean, it's it's a sleeping giant. When he, he's right, when option news comes, uh, this one's going to go through the roof. However, I have trouble getting by the the Shih Tzu that's planted on top of her head, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. So um, it's a great book, bottom line. Yeah. I'll never unsee it. It's a good pick. <laughs> Number seven. Number seven. Oh, we all know this one. Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace. Uh... Andy, isn't this one yours too, buddy? Yep. This, uh, this one was mine. And uh, I'm a huge believer in this book. Uh, Darth Maul. This is his first appearance in my in, in my book. Uh, a lot of people call it a cameo, but I mean he's on two pages spread out, pretty good. He talks, uh, and this book can be found for like five bucks right now. So while piece, people are chasing number three, this is uh, this is one that has some tremendous upside uh, for Darth Maul spec and newsstand issues. Correct. Yeah, there's an A and a B cover too. Um, both feature Anakin. The B cover has Anakin in a uh, X-wing helmet, I believe. Yep. 
Yep. I, I like the B cover myself, but that, that's just me. Good stuff. Number six. Number six. N Nico's bad drawing. Uh, so we got right. America, right? This is America. This number is 12. America number 12. The, the, oh. This was my pick. Um, America Chavez. Um, she's going to be in Doctor Strange. She's been cast. Huge character. Um, people don't realize how lightly ordered this series was towards the tail end. Uh, there are about 6,500 of this cover ordered um, by retailers, um, which is next to nothing for, for a Marvel comic. Um, there's no variants. There's no late printings. It's just this. Um, it sells pretty heftily online for 50 to 60 bucks, um, which I think is going to double from here. Um, but you can find it um, in back issue bins if you go looking. So that's what I would encourage you to go look for this book. Um, but a really cool cover. Um, this series, 1 through 12, issues 9, 10, 11, and 12, they're all like 8 to 9K or less ordered by retailers. So a real tough book to, to track down. Um, but I like this one, the last issue in the run the most. Um, I know Rich likes this book as well. He's a big believer. Uh, we've talked about it, but if you see this, grab it. And to, and also to add, you know, it's a limited run one through twelve, as Ben was just saying. But I mean, don't even sleep on the second issue as well. I mean, the second issue is has her with the hat and the graffiti in the background. I think uh, Captain America and either Monica Rambeau. Uh, I think Monica Rambeau's on it with her as well. So um, yeah, that one is also possibly going to be sought after. Um, there's well, there's a second print number two also. Yes, right? there's a second print as well. And it's the yes. Beyonce, hard, hard, right? right? So yes, yeah, correct. You've got the Beyonce lift and correct. Left. That the yeah. second print is super hard to find. So I'm trying, I'm trying not to go down that rabbit hole. I'm just saying, don't sleep on any of these issues in the limited series. Yeah, I'm can really I ask you guys? I hate to you know, uh, belabor any of these books too much, but uh, one of the reasons that America Chavez is so interesting for me is that the casting for her is so young. Right. Right. I mean, unlike Kamala Khan, unlike, uh, our all new Hawkeye, um, the young lady that they cast to play, uh, America Chavez is, you know, like barely a teenager. Um, she's 15, I, right? Yeah, 14, I mean, I don't, 14. But, but I mean, if you think about the time they filmed Doctor Strange and then give her her own thing, like, I think Marvel played that one pretty well because they're they're looking out a few years, right? Well, and I mean, I but my point is, um, you know, her uh character arc is that of uh, you know, somebody who's in their 20s, right? Right, so it, it looks like she's here to stay for the long run. Um, and that's, I guess, really what makes America Chavez uh, super interesting to me is because uh, it appears to me, uh, you know, from my kind of novice reading of the tea leaves of, of what's going on at uh, Marvel Studios, that they're committed to her for the next decade plus. Yeah, I 100% agree. Couldn't agree more, Nico. Couldn't agree more. And that's why this book is going to be gone before you know it. And I think it's going to hit prices that you're not going to believe. That cover's stunning, right? I mean, look at it. it, it, yep. it, it. Oh, yeah. All right, number five. Number five. Speaking of my ex-girlfriends. Oh, wait. Yes. Hey, hey, I got this one. X-Men 1A. Hey, it's a newsstand and not the regular version that I pulled up earlier. <laughs> yeah, so th this was my pick as well. Um, you know, of the covers from the 90s, this one is truly iconic. It maybe doesn't get the respect it deserves. Um, as we know, X-Men number one is the number one printed book in history. The direct, uh, the direct version of this probably had 1.5 million, they estimate, um, of copies, um, printed this one. And it was confirmed by Marvel by John Jackson Miller of Comicron to have 43,000 newsstand copies sold or distributed. Now, now, remember, newsstands at that time, you could return them. So there's far fewer of those that actually ended up into people's hands. And when you factor into the fact that, that these books were stuck in back issue bins, in high grade, this book is exceptionally rare. And I think a super important book um, 
that you know we should all have in our collection. So if you see this in newsstand, and you should be able to find it, you know, for a fairly uh, reasonable price, it's a grab and run. Um, so kudos to you, Ben. I, I uh, must admit to not being um, a big believer in a lot of these like uh, '90s newsstand picks uh, when you initially started talking about them, and I was like, eh. I think there's just too many copies. I think there's just too many copies. And what I've witnessed in 2020 with the, I mean, profound explosion in value for books like ASM 361, ASM 300, um, and, you know, even like Hulk 181, for example, uh, it seems to me that this is a really smart play going forward. And I think there's probably opportunities for, uh, example for Spider-Man 1, um, Spider-Man 8 in newsstand, and some of those other iconic 90s covers. Um, I, I'm really excited about the X-Men. I, I think uh, everybody on the panel knows that. I, I can't stop talking about it, even though it's years and years away. Um, really, really like this pick. Yeah, uh, 90s, X-Men, old. 90s X-Men in particular for a current generation is super important. This cover epitomizes that. But I think the, the fact that they're able to confirm how many new stands went out of this for, for the number one printed book of all time adds credence to sort of the, the 90s bubble newsstand books that we should be grabbing them, right? All of those important books in newsstand during that time period because they're probably all within this same print range, plus or minus, um, yeah. if, if, if this book came out in those numbers. So... Um, yeah, I, I can't speak more highly about this one. Um, grab it if you see it. I think they'll be happy you did. Yeah, I, I, I voted this one a, a, my number one pick uh, because it reminds me of other books, even regardless of newsstand. You know, what we see with Spawn 1, uh, Venom Lethal Protector 1. Um, you know, I mean, we've already seen books go before this, like some that uh both both ben and and nico you know rattled off um so there's no reason to think this won't follow the same path cool All good right. stuff guys number four well, it wouldn't be a list without our boy miles morales showing up yeah this is uh miles morales spider-man number 10 this book i'm really glad it got hit the list because you guys heard me speaking about this all week um this is your first appearance of Miles 616, or AKA what the market calls him, Evil Miles becoming Ultimatum. And CGC labels it just like that. First appearance, you know, Evil Miles, blah, blah, blah. blah. So, okay. We all know what's going on right now in the market. The Clone Saga is coming back. Obviously, Mr. Ahmad thought it was a, a success and needed to be uh, continued um, with the Assessor, Quantum, and um, uh, Ultimatum here. Now, remember, Ultimatum is the, is the mastermind behind it all. Assessor is the one that's actually doing the, the, the labor. Point being is that the market continues to fall back on Spider-Man 1 number. Uh, I'm sorry, Spider-Man 2, number one from 2017, which is your first appearance of the 616 Miles. But what is important is the actual character he becomes, and that is Ultimatum. I picked cover A. All the covers are fine. I mean, uh, retailers ordered this book at the tune of around 37000 CGC 9.8 for cover A is about 17, maybe 18 copies as of January 12th. And uh, same with the McGinnis 1 in 50, the Ramos 1 in 25. And there's also a second print that, that is at around 3K or less that's in circulation. But like I was saying to the guys before, does the market want the first appearance of Eddie Brock or do they want the first appearance of Venom? Do they want the first appearance of Norman Osborn or do they want the first appearance of Green Goblin? Do they want the first appearance of Cletus Cassidy or do they want the first appearance of Carnage? And this is what we have from Evil Miles. This is this is ultimatum. And he has now been, you know, Miles' number one adversary from issue 10 through 22. Now, 
you know, some spottiness in there. There was this, the assessor and the quantum and, and, and not the quantum, but quantum and what have you. But he was the mastermind behind this all. And he is continuing to be the mastermind. Matter of fact, he will be in issue 23 and he is confirmed to be in 25. This continuing, uh, Nico, what it tells me is, is that with everything with Spider-Verse and all these rumors with live action Miles, this tells me that possibly Marvel could be possibly laying groundwork for uh, live action here because he doesn't really have any solid villains and he needs one. Ultimatum is his main adversary. I mean, he can't just go around and fight Kingpin again, you know? So I think this is a smart play. I mean, I find, I, I find these in dollar bins all the time. It gets no love and people really need to take you know, uh, take a look at this book and read through it and, 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 and basically process what I'm saying and, and see if you agree. Yeah. Now the second Prince dirt cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right here. I mean, it, it's a cool cover in its own right. And, uh, if I, I, I grabbed this, this one right here off the cut off, uh, off the, off the rack the other day. So this is it. If you see it, grab this one too, man. Cause what is it, Richie? Like, 3k 3500 something like that that were ordered yeah it's around it's around 3 3k and I, the reason why i picked cover a though is, is is that because i like all the covers i like the mcginnis one in one in 50 the ramos 21 and 25 but i like cover a because uh the market seems to kind of gear towards you know first full appearance plus if he's on the cover and he's on the cover there so good stuff man Number three. Here we go. Journey into Mystery. This is a 622 second print. Yeah, so I love this book. This was my pick. Um, it's still available on eBay. There are cheap copies, 20, 30 bucks a piece. Uh, obviously, you've got the Tom Hiddleston photo cover. Um, what I really think uh, is the play on this is because it's the first appearance of Eichel, uh, the female iteration of Loki. Uh, as uh, probably everyone that's watching this uh, is aware, Loki was renewed for a second season. Uh, it appears that the plot of season one and season two is going to be Loki arrested by the Time Variance Authority, sentenced to rectifying the damage caused by different iterations of Loki throughout the multiverse uh, in different you know timelines. Um, we know that Eichel is going to appear in season one. I think uh, this book will obviously have its day in the sun um, when uh, she appears in live action in that television series. But going forward, because it is uh, such a low print book, the Tom Hiddleston photo cover may be the book um, that shines brightest of them all out of the Loki TV series. Either way, uh, it's a smart play. And uh, these kinds of books are always super popular uh, for con season, particularly uh, when you've got an opportunity maybe to get lucky and get Tom Hiddleston to put his uh, signature on the cover of it. Uh, tough and high grade, all black. Uh, you guys voted for it. Why the hell did you do that? Nico, I think it's a brilliant pick. Um, I've hunted these for a while. I love it. I would say that there's actually an undercurrent to this book. So this book is very topical to the Loki TV show for all the reasons that you said. Um, but I believe there is a big, and there's a, another book on the list this week that didn't make the cut that fits this vein. But I think there's a big, big, big opportunity um, in these MCU books with the likeness of the characters from the movies that we've grown to love. So the photo covers and also the illustrations in the likeness of these characters, I yeah. think are big, big opportunities. I mean, the one that jumps to mind is Black Widow number one. I think it's a one in 10 or one in 15 with uh, Scarlett Johansson on it. Um, you know, that book goes for hundreds of dollars. It's um, just a top nine, eight, too. Really tough, right? But a beautiful book. And I think there's a number of books that sort of fall within this mold that people will chase over time. And you can grab them right now for relatively low money. I don't think they'll always be this cheap but i love this pick um and I, I think there's a lot of reasons to like it 
Yeah, and uh, either the next issue or the prior issue is an Anthony Hopkins cover. I'd snag that one too if you see these in a long box somewhere. I got a I got a quick question, Nico. So we'll, what's up with the uh, Thor? Uh, what is that? Five, J. Scott Campbell from two thousand seven, where um, Loki, it's Sif. It, um, he turns to a woman in Sif's body. I gotcha. Yeah. Do you, I mean, is that, I mean, is that, um, is that a book worth picking up? Or? I, I think any iteration of Loki at all, kid Loki, okay. uh, you know what I mean? Because they're literally going to do two seasons where he looked like the vote Loki, uh, president Loki is an iteration. I think all of them, uh, and probably a, a ton of them that I'm not familiar with because I haven't read, uh, Thor for the last, you know, 30 years, <laughs> um, like some people out there. Uh, but it's something to like go to Google for it and figure out. I, I think that they've all got potential, and uh, if you get lucky, uh, particularly with a, a good you know three episode arc, you might be able uh, to really you know make some cash on it all too. And Hiddleston <laughs> being like the epitome of this character on this cover. I mean, this thing's a goddamn home run, Nico. I mean, like literally. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, and, it's brilliant. It's in a lull too, and and the market has chosen this book definitely i was just wa wanted to know maybe uh at least for our listeners and for our fans you know and you just answer the question just pick up anything that's loki right now yeah all the different iterations of loki i think uh but we've even seen like the first appearance start to move i, I expect that that uh series which uh initially people poo-pooed uh may turn out to be the most beloved of the first year of television series uh, I mean, hell, it's got Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. Uh, those two together on a television series uh, just blows my mind. I mean, actors of that caliber usually don't do TV. Yeah, I can't wait. Good pick. Thank you, sir. Here we go, number two. All right, so now I had nominated this book. Uh, oh, this is not number two. Unless, unless the voting changed. That's number two, Miss Marvel 13, Woman of Power variant. It is. It is. Oh. Fair enough. Well, that was my pick, too. Yeah. All right. I guess the voting changed. Well, I, I hit uh, lightning twice. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, this is the first appearance of uh, Cameron, uh, who is Ms. Marvel's uh, love interest and cast in live action for the television series. Um, it's a $20 book that you can purchase on eBay right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's a safe play because he'll be a fixture on that television series. Uh, if I've learned anything, um, from, you know, the last year in comics, it's that the people who love television and, uh, sort of, uh, love comics, uh, you know, they really love them, uh, but just not the way we do have absolutely no idea who, the, what's going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, we're like really ahead of the curve. Um, for sure. Uh, you are too. If you're watching this show, I promise it. Um, so I think this book's going to have an opportunity to pop. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, you've got an opportunity to snag them now while they're cheap. Uh, but you guys voted for it too. What, what the heck do you think? I, I think, I think the Ms. Marvel TV show is not going to be a one and done like some of the others. I think we're going to get multiple seasons of this and these characters are going to be around for a while and we're going to grow and we're going to learn learn more about them. So yeah, I think it's a great pick. Anything Miss Marvel Miss Marvel related right now is really, really, really good spec because she she's got a TV show and she has been linked to the next decade plus of Marvel movies. So um, I think it's a really smart pick for the price, and it can only go higher from here. And there's a couple of covers, but this one we have here for me is 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 the best one. Yeah, I, I'm right with you. I, 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 you can see my vote when we get off. Uh, I was fairly aggressive on this book. I love this cover as well. Great pick. Um, I like Ben was saying anything that is linked to Miss Marvel in either her circle, meaning her people, meaning you know, uh, going from family to friends to neighbors, and then you know any kind of villains or what have you. I would be picking up you know, by the dozens if I can, because they're just so cheap right now. Great pick. Nice. Cool. Here we go, number one. King of the Mountain. That's right. 
Top of the heap. It's good. Root number one. I nominated it in a previous week. Who the hell nominated it this week? This this was Mel's this week. And, Woo! Uh, yeah, he he's he's spot on here. There is tremendous potential and upside on this book. Uh, not only in the A cover here, but the there's a Mingola B cover and then a C cover that's like a got a jazz feel to it. And uh, I know the Mingola cover is like you can get for less than forty bucks on eBay at a nine eight. So, I mean, that's that's tough, you know. Yeah, there's. Uh- Okay, so there's so many covers. I just uh, subbed one to CGC today. They have them labeled A through G. Yep. Wow. Oh, yeah, yep. Like that's how they're labeled on the CGC label too. Yep. Um, but I freaking I freaking uh, love this property. Love this book and um, pick the A cover. Uh, I think is you know Rich and others have uh, explained just because that's what the market picks. Um, you know, we, a lot of times I think, think the market's a lot more sophisticated than it is. It's not, people just go for the A cover. Um, but, uh, can somebody who, uh, is a little familiar with, uh, the storyline of Bitterroot sort of explain why, um, the property was optioned, uh, quietly, uh, and why, um, they think it has potential for, uh, a live action, um, you know, day on television. That's that Andy's department. I mean, I, it's 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 got it checks all the boxes basically. Um, it's a it follows a, a the a family in Harlem and they are uh, monster hunters and I mean it's great. It, it's 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 culture at its best is I guess is the best way to say it. Um, yeah. I mean it's it's a great read and there's the live action part of it with what they can do today with technology and all i mean this this thing has potential to be a a, a monster for sure no part of you, you know uh yeah that's a good one um you know another thing about uh bitter root is uh they're under order or you know there's not a lot of them out there and uh, you know go down the line this kind of the store not the story don't get me confused with the story but the way that the publisher is working these covers it reminds me a lot of ice cream man Okay, how they have these cover swipes, these homages, these beautiful art that are kind of very unique in the sense. Like, for instance, there is uh, uh, there's a Purple Rain uh, uh, swipe. There's an NWA swipe. I think there's a New Jack City swipe, so on and so forth. So, you know, um, I I, I think, uh, you know, all types of collectors and speculators should be jumping on this book. Yeah, I mean, Lovecraft Country paves the way to live action for this property for me. Um, I I think uh, there's certainly a a temperament in Hollywood to uh, tell stories uh, that are authentic. And um, this is one of those stories. If you're not reading it, I really suggest picking up the trade. Um, I think uh, you'll you'll fall in love with the series. I've been buying... um, these books, I, I don't really pay too much attention to what they're selling for. Uh, I know there's a, a number of like B covers that are, are moving for a big price tag, but for me, it's not uh, a book that um, you know I'm, I'm looking to flip right now. Uh, I think they're ones to stick in in your boxes and, and keep. All right, so, yeah, that's our uh, our top ten list.